programme. If you're on social media, BBC DN is the hashtag to use tonight to take part in the conversation. Let's take our first question of the night, which comes from Florencia Garcia Chafuen. Hi, hello, good evening. Um, my question is as follows. How do we learn to unlearn our bigotry, our hatred and our racism? Thank you. We've seen a week of protests after the death of George Floyd tonight. Demonstrations in London, demonstrations planned for Scotland coming up as well. Florencia, you're from South America originally, um, now living in Dumfries and Galloway. Do you think this is something that we have inside all of us? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. Well, let's put it to the panel. Hamza Youssef. Well, Florencia, thank you for the question. From my point of view, first and foremost, let's call out the deplorable scenes, uh, the horrific scenes that we've seen uh, in the United States. But also, you're right, let's hold a mirror up to ourselves also, because there is no way that Scotland is free from bigotry, no way that Scotland is free from hatred uh, or indeed from racism. And I suppose my view on the direct answer to your question is this. I've been struck by a quote that you've probably seen yourself. It's been shared many times in social media from Desmond Tutu, attributed to Desmond Tutu, which is uh, in situations of, of, of injustice, to be silent is to side with the oppressor. And for me, that is the ultimate lesson for all of us, regardless of our political beliefs, regardless of our racial background, that is the ultimate lesson. That it's not enough anymore to say, I'm not a racist. Good for you, you shouldn't be a racist. You've now got to say, I'm anti-racist. We've all got to examine and explore the institutions that we belong to, the society in which we live, and each and every single one of us has a responsibility to look at the structural barriers that exist that hold people back that are ethnic minorities and racial minorities. And we have to do that, whether you're in the government, and I've got a job to do that within government, or whether you're part of any other institution, and we have to be proactive in that, because if we're not, then all we're going to see is that inequality uh, between uh, the, the, the races uh, just get wider uh, and wider. But the first step absolutely has to start by calling out uh, the injustices that we see, and, and not just the, 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 the terrible uh, death, the, the, frankly, the murders that we see uh, of, of black uh, Americans, but also, frankly, let's be honest, we've got to call out the inflammatory divisional language from the president uh, in all of this we, we, at, a, at a time when we've expected you know our leaders to show compassion to bring countries together we've had a president that has been pandering to the very worst of society in order for his own electoral success and we should make sure that all of us are united in calling that out? We've had our own challenges here. You've ordered a public inquiry into the death of Sheikh Abayu in, in police custody. That took five years for that inquiry to be called. Would it have taken that long if he'd been a white man? Well, you know, that is an absolutely legitimate question uh, to ask. Now, I'm not responsible, as you'd imagine, uh, for, for prosecutorial decisions. That's quite rightly for a Lord Advocate to do. And so there was a, a process that it had to go through. But I, I absolutely accept the criticism from the Bio family, who have acted with incredible dignity to say that that has taken too long. But this is the difference here. If there is an issue where somebody of a racial minority is killed in police custody, there is a choice for the state to make. That choice could be to either become defensive and say, we're not going to answer that question. We're going to put our fingers in our ears. We're not going to seek the truth. But the approach that we've taken, and I hope I've demonstrated this as Justice Secretary, is by ordering a public inquiry where the terms of reference exclusively ask the question, uh, include the question of whether or not race was a factor in the death of Sheikho, uh, hopefully demonstrates that actually, regardless of how uncomfortable the truth may be, we are going to get to the bottom uh, of the questions that need to be answered. Okay. In that Jamie Green, do you despair with President Trump in the same way as Hamza Youssef does? I despair at all forms of racism and prejudice. Um, you know, I've only been in politics a few short years. One of the first, first things I did was set up a cross-party group to address some of the prejudices that face the LGBT community, um, uh, something that I'm a member of. But just on that and specific point, Bo Boris Johnson has a good relationship with President Trump. He's yeah. told us that. They've both told us that. Would you rather see somebody else in the White House next year? 
Well, let, let me make my point first, because the, the, the question is around whether people are born with prejudice. Uh, and I'm not sure that they always are. I think that, that, that some of these are learned behaviours. And I don't think any of us are immune from that. Even, you know, we consider Scotland to be a progressive modern society. But we know racism still exists. We know homophobia still exists. We know sectarianism still exists in our communities. And, and I'd like to start on a note of consensus with Hamza on this, because it is important that I think regardless of your politics or where you sit on any of the debates around the Constitution, that, that we all, as public figures, politicians, people in the media, people on shows like this, say this is unacceptable to all of us, and it should, uh, it must end. You know, it, it simply has to. Now, we need the, the, now Boris Johnson has a relationship with the office of the President of the United States. You know, Presidents of the US have come and gone over the years. Some have been more popular than others. Would you like I accept to see that. this one go? Well, that's, that's a decision for the American people in, in a few short months. Um, and, and, and presidents, as all politicians are, judged by their actions. But what we have to do is come to a collective and say that these things are far too important to let party politics get in the way. And for that reason, you know, as a white man, arguably middle class, arguably middle aged, it's, it's easy for me to just put out a meme and a tweet saying that I agree with people, but it's what we do that matters. It's not just what we say. Therefore, what we have to do is work together uh, on, some of the, on tackling some of these difficult issues that, that start at a very early point in people's lives. You okay, know. Can, can, can I just ask a question? And look, I, I've known Jamie for, for, for a number of years and get along very well uh, with Jamie. I suppose the point I'm trying to make is actually essentially the one you're making. Putting out memes or hashtags actually is the easy part. The difficult part is where it might be politically inconvenient. Mm. To do so, we have to make sure we speak up. And I think the very basic question that, that Stephen was asking and, and to which you haven't answered yet, and I think it would be quite important to be able to answer, is that we haven't had really, as far as I can see, any Conservative step forward and say, you know what, we might well have a relationship with President Trump, uh, that special relationship. But actually, I utterly condemn the inflammatory language. If you loot, I'll shoot. All of that stuff, which was yeah. taken from a, yeah. a, a, a racist in the 1960s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think it's really important just to be able to say, actually, I condemn Donald Trump's language and his actions. And I think that would go a long way. In no, I, I hear what you're saying, Hamza. And, 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 and I know, I know why you're asking that question. You know, I don't have a relationship with Donald Trump. Um, my party doesn't either. We have a relationship with the office of the president of the United States. Um, but he, and, and, I, and the, a close relationship. The man is the president a, at the yeah, moment. Yeah, indeed. And you must close, have a view on it. Uh, well, I have a view uh, in the sense that any form of language which uh, infers uh, that it's okay uh, to abuse or, or, or attack protesters or journalists or people who have a valid issue um, is wrong. I'm happy to say that. Right. But, you know... It, it, he was elected by the American people and, be, and it will be up to the American people to decide if he comes back or not. And okay, that, that's okay. an important point in democracy. Okay, let me hear from Aisha Hazarika on this. Aisha. Well, you know, it's very depressing to still be talking about these issues. I, I've written an article today for my paper, The Evening Standard. I feel this is a topic I keep writing about. We have an atrocity. Somebody is murdered. We have lots of hot tears, hot takes, and then we have amnesia and we forget about it. And there is there's two types of, of racism. There is the, the racism we see, which is the violence on the street. And we all clutch our pearls and say, isn't that terrible? But there is the more insidious uh, institutional structural racism, which exists in a lot of our institutions. I worked as a young press officer on the, the, the case of the Stephen Lawrence um, inquiry at, at the Home Office, which found that the Metropolitan Police was institutionally racist. And, and that was a big moment. Yet it sometimes feels like things have not moved on so much. Now, sometimes I think we think Scotland is a utopia where there is no such racism, and that's just not true. Hamza himself has experienced racism. I know Anna Sarwar has. There's not very many BAME uh, members of the Scottish Parliament. I think that's something that we do need to really work on, on changing, because I think you're never really going to tackle the horrible racism you see in the street until you actually change the structures of power. And I've experienced it myself in Scotland. I was told quite recently, in fact, me and my brother were told that we didn't really have a right to have a, a, a proper um, opinion on the future of Scotland because we were not, and I quote, properly Scottish. Now, I was born in this country in Bells Hill. My brother was born in this country in Bells Hill. We are Scottish. That's how we feel. Yet we were told by somebody else, obviously because of the colour of our skin, that we were not 
properly Scottish. So I think we've still got a long, long way to go on this debate. And I'm, uh, and I'm, but I will say one thing for Jamie. I'm afraid it's not good enough to just have weasel words on on Donald Trump. Donald Trump is promoting, you know, a, a white supremacy which is costing lives and is dangerous. And quite frankly, we need political leadership. And we're so desperate for a Brexit deal that we're prepared to throw away all our morals. And quite frankly, Boris Johnson has not covered himself in glory. His comments on Muslim women were frankly appalling and actually led to attacks going up on Muslim women. So I'm afraid we can all talk a good game about being kumbaya and wanting people to come together, but we've got to make sure our political leaders actually, you know, show that leadership that is necessary. Okay, uh, Jamie, you've been given two opportunities now to, to give an outright condemnation of Donald Trump and how he's handled this. Do you want to take it again? Yeah, look, I mean, you know, I, that image of him walking down the street, you know, waving a Bible around, it made me think, about the days when my granny used to take me to church and I, the first thing I learned at church was love thy neighbour. And I think that's a message that we could all learn. Uh, uh, Donald Trump and people who believe uh, the things that he say and his followers uh, can't hide behind Bibles and books. Um, you know, I, so I'm, you know, look, I hear what Aisha is saying. Um, I think we do need to lead by example. Uh, and that's why I'm, I'm happy to say uh, that it, 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 I think it, it will require people like myself, like people in the media, like people in politics, who don't suffer those issues to say this is unacceptable and we must tackle it at a local level. Um, you know, I, I'm shocked to hear the story you just shared about what somebody said to you in the streets of Scotland. You know, that's something that, that we on this panel can address. You know, I can't affect what happens with Donald Trump. You know, I can condemn him, I can praise him, I can, I can say these things on television. But what I can affect is what happens in my local community. Okay. And I think it's right to speak out in that way, which is exactly what I will do. Okay. Uh